What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today, I wanna to share with you uh, sort of a first impressions of the no time to explain exotic pulse rifle. So this is a lot like the stranger's rifle, very much based on that design and it's available today for the very first time. Uh, to get this, you basically have to complete the daily heroic mission on Paradox, but there's a side quest where you gotta find three ghosts and that opens up a new portion of the mission where you gotta fight this big ass Minotaur who's got a ton of ads around him. You gotta kill him and you are rewarded with a cult ghost, which you then turn into the future war cult. Once you do that, you wait till the next weekly reset and you're you're gonna get a new quest and that quest is gonna give you the no time to explain when you're done with it. It's a no joke quest. You gotta kill a heroic taken minotaur. You have to beat Atheon in the Vault of Glass. Uh, and there's a really nasty level at the very end where you, there's just a ton of minotaurs around. You gotta kill those minotaurs uh, and kill like a big giant minotaur. It's a tough quest, trust me. Uh, but once you get it, once you've got it done, you get the no time to explain, and I gotta say, it's definitely worth doing the quest for. This is a very cool gun. So let's take a look at the perks. First of all, it is a kinetic damage weapon. It is not arc damage. A lot of people thought it would be arc damage. A lot of people wanted the uh, stranger's rifle to be arc damage because it shows that it has like electricity spitting out of it. It's not, it's kinetic damage. That's a little bit disappointing. Next, we have three different ballistics, smooth, accurized, and smart drift control. Uh, I'm pretty much sticking with accurized ballistics at this point to get a little more impact out of the weapon. Uh, you definitely couldn't be faulted for going with smooth ballistics, which is gonna give you a little more range, a little more stability at the cost of a tiny bit of impact. Next, it's a full auto weapon, just like the stranger's rifle. Next here, we have speed reload, hand loaded, and fitted stock. I kind of stick with hand loaded. I find that range is a very, very important stat for year two. Uh, so anytime I can get more range, I tend to go that direction. Next, the exotic perk is rewind again. Precision hits are immediately returned to the magazine. Think about that for a second. Think about standing in front of Golgoroth and firing this thing into his belly and never having to reload. Think about any, any boss character that's got a pretty big crit spot you're gonna be able to fire this a lot before you have to reload. It's a very useful perk, even against ads. When you got a mob of ads and you can just be picking them off, doing headshots, this thing is not gonna to have to be relo reloaded a lot. It feels a lot like the bad juju in that respect. Uh, and it, it's kind of a funny weapon. It kind of feels a little bit like the bad juju and kind of like the red death. Uh, it's got some features that it kind of shares between those two weapons. All right, so impressions. How, how am I liking this gun so far? Uh, I'm liking it. I, I like it quite a bit. In PvE, let's talk about PvE first. Uh, it's definitely not the god tier weapon for clearing mobs that you might think it is. I think there's better weapons out there. If you can stay accurate though, this rewind again perk really helps you out because you just have to reload less. The magazine size of 24, it will run out on you pretty quickly. So having to reload less with that fairly slow reload speed, definitely a nice perk. It's against bosses that I think this thing is really gonna shine and unfortunately I haven't gotten it into the raid yet. I'm looking forward to trying to kill Golgoroth with it and seeing how fast a team of guys with the no time to explain can do it. I suspect it's gonna take longer than it would with something like a black spindle, but we'll have to see. The no time to explain in PVE, you're, you're not giving up a lot. It would be nice if it did have arc damage. I think that would have really it would have escalated it into that top tier of PVE weapons, but as it is, it's not bad. And I think that there will be some, some serious uses for it. Having that rewind again perk again, very, very cool. Uh, and full auto, it's just, it's just easier to use full auto weapons when you're going through raids and stuff like that. Your finger just gets less tired. It just takes, I don't know, somehow less concentration to use a full auto weapon. In PVP, well, let me, let me show you the Red Death. Um, I'll kind of compare it with the Red Death. The Red Death, I think, is one of, the, one of my favorite weapons to use in PvP right now. And you can see the rate of the fire and the impact are very, very similar. No Time to Explain actually has better range and better stability, but a slower reload speed and a smaller magazine size. So it's good in PvP. 
I don't think it's as good as Red Death, though, and I'll tell you why. Red Death gives you your health back after a kill. That is hugely, hugely good in PvP because you can kill a guy and you're almost immediately ready for your next fight. No Time to Explain doesn't have that perk. The Precision Hits perk on No Time to Explain, it doesn't really feel like an amazing perk in PvP. Uh, it definitely will come in handy on occasion, uh, just because, you know, you, you get a few precision hits in there. Maybe it's the difference between killing two guys without reloading or killing three guys without reloading. But, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to come into play that much. Not like getting your health back after every kill. Also, for some reason, maybe it's just because I've gotten used to firing the Red Death and it's a pulse-fired weapon, so I've just gotten used to the timing and the accuracy of it. Even though the stability is better on No Time to Explain, because it's full auto, I find that my fire is a little bit more wild, so to tame it, I end up using it like a pulse-fire weapon anyway, uh, especially when guys are further away. So that that full auto feature on the no time to explain for me doesn't seem to be coming into in handy that often. And it definitely doesn't seem to be as good and a perk as having your health get regenerated or having uh, unflinching. So right now I like it in PVP, but I don't love it in PVP. I find that considering the, how similar the red death and the no time to explain are, I think the red death has an edge and I think bad juju probably does as well. Uh, and we'll have to look at the time to kill, but I'm guessing it's almost exactly the same as Red Death. It may be a little faster if you can use full auto and be accurate with it because, you know, there's no room for error there. Uh, you, you don't have to, the gun doesn't have to wait for you to pull the trigger. It's just going to, it's going to fire as fast as it can every time. So, you know, your results may vary for me. I still think I prefer Red Death over No Time to Explain for PvP. Again, very for very early impressions here. This is not a review. Just kind of spitballing what I think of the gun after a couple hours of playing with it. And uh, I am enjoying it, uh, but there's definitely caveats to it so far. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you next time.